What's good, y'all? Um, today's video is about how to deal with loss. Um, I'm at a real peaceful place in my life, being the fact that I've, I've accepted the fact that I've lost a lot in my life, and it took a long time to get to this point. Um, and when I say loss, I'm talking about family, I'm talking about friends, I'm talking about my best friend, I'm talking about women in my life that I actually felt myself being in their life, in our lives, uh, for the rest of our time on this earth. And um, over the course of the last couple of weeks, I've really seen a couple of my friends that really needs to see this video. And so it was put on my heart to shoot it. Um, though what triggered the reason for me wanting to shoot this video was actually um, three weeks ago. So three weeks ago, Friday, I'm, I'm laying, literally laying in a hospital bed and started with a hospital gown contemplating life because my heart stopped on me for the fourth time in my life and really bothered me i'm like yo why is this happening to me why um not in the best shape but i could, could it, it used to be much worse and i'm like yo like why me and you start to question it when you when stuff goes through like why me why am i experiencing this why like, as soon as life becomes a little bit better why does it always 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 gives us shit and another thing another reason i wanted to shoot this video is because a lot of my friends have been going through stuff um i shot my video about depression and anxiety and that opened up the floodgates for people telling me how they felt about life itself and i want to continue to talk about things to help encourage us to talk about one the things that bother bother us two um to give us to create a healthy conversation about mental health but also i want to just be able to i want to be able to make people feel comfortable about expressing themselves you know that's something that no, like we really don't do so here we go um i'll tell you about the very first thing i lost very early on i lost my family um, from new orleans louisiana and at an early age it was a disconnect between my family and I remember when I was a child, I always wanted to reach out for my dad and had him had him have him be there in my life, but he was never there. So I had to deal with that loss early. Mind you, that's a typical loss, but um, it wasn't so typical going through it. I'm like, yo, um, I wanted somebody to aspire to be like. I wanted somebody to teach me things, somebody I can play with, somebody I can that can help me develop and. When he wasn't there, I had to become the man of the house by the age of seven. And by the age of 11, I was um, pretty much in foster care. And by the age of 13, I was actually full-time foster care. So um, long story short, my biological mother said I tried to kill her. And simply, I was just washing a knife. And if you know how to wash a knife, you know you wash it with the blade up, the blade up away from you. So... I was watching it. She called me and I didn't drop the knife. I just started to turn around and she was over my left shoulder. I go to point the, uh, I didn't mean to point the knife at her. She just happened to be right there. And it, the tip of the knife was at her stomach. And she called the Department of Children and Family Services and said I tried to kill her. I ended up in full-time foster care. So I was in full-time foster care from 13 to 19. And those years were critical to me because it's like I had people that weren't my family raising me. I had people that really didn't have their best interest in me raising me. Like I knew what I wanted to do. I knew what I wanted to accomplish. But sometimes those people, there are people in your life that see you living a life that they want you to live and not necessarily understanding how you want to live your life. So throughout the course of my, um, my high school years, um, I lost a couple of my friends. Um, I really lost somebody um, I looked up to. And we, back in high school, we weren't the best of friends, kind of rivals in a way. But I looked up to him because he had style and people appreciated him, people loved him. I'm not going to say his name in this video, but if you went to Washington Preparatory High School, you know exactly what I'm, what I'm talking about. You um, know, yeah, um, I moved away to, from Compton uh, to Los Angeles, California, Compton, California, stay at another foster home. And a couple months later, I found out that he died. And how he died was crazy. He died 
because he made too much money in the dice game. And they didn't like it, so they sent one of the younger boys, I think it was about 10 or 11 to go, to murder him. So that was a loss in my life. I lost somebody I looked up to and I aspired to be. Um, fast forward to J January 12, no, January 8th of 2005. Um, getting ready for my 18th birthday. And there was a staff member that lived at the old group home I used to live at. His name was Theo Grafford. And um, to this day, I feel bad because I, the anger I had inside of me didn't allow me to get over the fact that he gave me a bowl cut when I was 15. I held that grudge for years. I'm talking about I wouldn't talk to him even if I seen him in the streets. If I seen his children, would not talk to him because I held that grudge because he put me in a position where I was the laughing stock of the school being the fact that we had a basketball tournament and I was getting ready for it and he had to cut everybody else's hair in the house and I was the last one because I wanted to have that personal time with me because he was that father figure to me. And he got tired and I guess he got tired. He went too high on my fade. Next thing you know, my fade all the way up here. And I was like, yo, what is this? So I got everybody in the house laughing at me. He laughing at me. I go to school. I can't. I, they tell me to take my beanies off. I get suspended. If I get suspended, I can't play in a tournament. It's a big tournament to get seen. And I'm like, yo. So, so yeah. So I told him I wanted. To, um, I told myself on my 18th birthday I wanted to be a man, and um, I wanted to be a man. And actually, um, I apologized to him and tell him I, I, I really want you in my life. I need you. So I decided to call that group home. And that group home told me that he passed away. I immediately hung up the phone. I called again and they confirmed it that he, they found him um, dead in his house, overdosed on oxycodone and, um, and um, alcohol. So that destroyed me. The one man I felt as though can help me become who I need to be in life, who struggled, who really dug deep to tell me that I didn't need to be a game bearing, I didn't have to be a blood, I didn't have to follow his footsteps, that I could be something in life and there was nobody in the area that's telling us that we could do this. Nobody really pushing us to propel us to be better than what we were. He was the only person doing that. And now he's gone. Gone. And I gotta live with that for the rest of my life knowing that I couldn't learn that lesson earlier to apologize to him, to let him know what he meant to me. Fast forward a couple months later, my grandfather died. My grandfather died, and I hated that man to death. Hated him because to this day, he, still, he and his family still think I stole something from him I know I didn't steal. He used to be a, a, time, a time clock holder for the Olympics. He had this real, this real official thousand dollar multiple thousand dollar a stopwatch that came up missing and they said I stole it at the time I was stealing shit but I wasn't stealing shit from people I knew I, I was stealing stuff from like businesses that that really didn't give back to the community and I used to steal stuff because one my mom didn't have to couldn't afford them to, to take care of me let alone my three sisters so I just steal to, to make to make ends meet for me and yes I regret that that stuff I live with I actually overcame and have to deal with over my life but Long story short, um, he, um, when I was in seventh grade, it was about 2.30 in the morning, he pulled me out of my bed, drug, he, he snuck in, he broke into the house, um, drug me out of bed, and beat, my, beat everybody in the house so he got to me, and then put me in the car and he took me to the alley and damn near killed me. And I'm talking about lumps all over my face, choked me out with a belt, punching on me, punching on me, punching on me, punching on me. And I'm like, and I, like at that point, I was really scared. I didn't want to hit him back because I was taught to respect my elders, but I, I can literally feel him beating the life out of me. And I'm like, so that happened. And when I was 18, he passed away. I didn't tell my biological, biological mother this, but it hurt me. Because now the only man I knew that was part of my family tree is gone. So I lost two of the most important men in my life. One man showed me what it was to be a man. One man showed me what it was to not 
we're not to do, we're not to become. Fast forward a couple of years, um, fast forward to 2012, my best friend, um, best friend, she been my best friend for years, since high school, it was almost love at first sight, but we understood that what we needed each other, we needed each other in our life beyond that. And to be, just to be just to, uh, that rock and that's, uh, to be that stable source of energy. And I had to let her go. Um, I felt as though like she, she came to visit the city I was living at the time and didn't even respond to me when she was here. And then she just left without saying it was on accident. I felt as though, yo, you really don't give a damn about me or whatnot. So I had to settle with taking that loss on my own. And that was crucial. And the most recent loss I had when I lost my business, I lost a business while I was helping people get fit and lose weight. And I ended up on the streets. I was on homeless on the streets from February um, 21st of 2016 to 11, to 11, to uh, December 21st of 2016. And I got off the streets and ended up back on the streets because lost my job three couple months later so I was pretty much on the streets for almost a year and a half and um, that loss taught me that, that there's strength inside me that I didn't have I hope nobody have to go through homelessness like it taught me a lot about myself as many times I almost died where I'm sleeping on a park bench and I see nothing but snow and I didn't have nothing that, to cover me because I only had a hoodie a pair, pair three pair of socks and, and sweats I remember one time, it was back in March sometime, around the time I got the vision from United as One. It was a Sunday. I think it was the 14th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, no, it was the 13th of March 13th of 2016. Um, about noontime, I called an Uber. And the Uber came to pick me up and asked me, like, dang, you, you've been out here in the cold for a while. I was like, yeah, I actually slept in this for the last 15 hours. And he's like, oh my God, how do you survive? And I'm like, I don't know, but I need to get to the gym immediately. He's like, that's where you're going? I was like, yes. He's like, why well, do you need to get there immediately? Because I'm like, if I don't get in that sauna room right now, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. I literally felt my soul leaving my body. Even this, you turn the heat on in the house, I mean in the car, and that didn't do anything. I literally, he got me, he sped to the gym, jammed and got a ticket, but because of me, and I get in that, and I get to the gym and I pass out. Oh. I pass out. And they give me, they ask me, they uh, end up waking every, resuscitate me whatever and ask me what, what I need to do I was like I just need to get to the sauna room immediately so I went there stinking like I was in shower in days cause I haven't and they put me in the sauna room I stayed there for a couple of hours until my body would be defrosted and I felt like man if I didn't get there when I did I would have died so I want to let people know who listened to this video maybe things that I've explained in this video may not have you may not have experienced it but I want you to know one thing. We go through things because we're meant to experience it. We go through things because they're tests. They're tests to, to, test to help us pass in order to become who we need to be. And if we fail, then we remain the same. First key to anything in life is acceptance. Acceptance of the fact that it will happen or it is happening right now. The next step you need to, uh, to, to understand is can you affect positive change on a situation? If you're, if you're dealing with family, if you're dealing with loved ones, if you're dealing with financial situation, if you can affect a, a positive outcome on it, then do so. If you can't, sometimes it's best to walk away. You have to, um, for the sake of your own. Now, you may not be able to walk from family members, but kind of distance yourself to the fact you can get your own mental, men, mental right. You can get, um, get clarity, sanity, and... So you can move on with you. And if it's a loved one, you have to understand that one, if that person not helping you grow, if that person isn't helping you advance in life, um, 
person just a mannequin at that point, just there to look pretty. As you dress it, how you see it in your, your thoughts and your dreams. We don't need that in our life right now. It's 2018 and we're trying and we're in a dark time right now. Everybody needs somebody in their life to not only help them build, but also help them with become happy. You can't make anybody happy, but you can help somebody become happy. And a lot of people walking around here not not feeling that way. So once you accept the fact um, accept the fact that you can't affect positive change or not, the next the third step is actually taking the action steps to make something happen from there, to change the outcome of the situation, to put yourself in a better situation and things of that nature. Um, I hope this video finds you and hope that it helps you. If you have any questions, feel free to comment in the sec comment section below. Again, my name is Russell. Have a good rest of y'all day.